we all use cognitive filters. We all use what's called motivated reasoning. We will readily accept something if it supports our beliefs. We will resist or even reject it if it challenges our beliefs. We do this in every aspect of our life. I mean, I, was, I drove here. I hear a rattle in the front right corner of my car. I'm thinking there's a stone in the wheel. I'm thinking something innocuous because I do not want to reach the conclusion that the car has to go to the mechanic. I'm using motivated reasoning. And on climate change, people are using motivated reasoning because aspects of it challenge their worldview. And they will resist and they will reject it. Where do these cognitive filters come from? Well, they come from the cultural communities that we identify with. They come from those that we trust as being sources of information. The idea of cultural cognition, this is Dan Kahan's work at Yale, saying that we are influenced by group values and we endorse those values of the groups that we associate with because we want to fit. So here in academia, we're part of a community and we have a certain set of rules and norms that we accept to be true and we want to fit. Uh, that never became more clear to me than during the George W. Bush years. I was actually quite impressed how many times I would see people come to a university that they'd never been to, give a seminar, and not be afraid to do a rip on George W. because they knew they were in a liberal environment and it was safe territory to do that. Go outside, you know, I remember being at the academy in San Antonio and some people were doing a rip on George W. We were hitting the doors. We walked through the doors to enter the city and I was like, guys, we're not in the academy anymore. You might want to be careful about your language. <laughs> there is how we can think about the cultural communities. And so I could, for example, talk about news sources or wh who, who do you consider to be trusted representatives of your cultural community? I could use two names, Rush Limbaugh, Al Gore. One of those names, no matter what audience I'm talking to, will generally make some people's stomach twist. I, don't, I won't believe a word that person says. They could say the sun will rise tomorrow. I'm going to check the weather channel to make sure that they're, what they're saying is true. I could give you two news sources, Fox News, National Public Radio. There are actually surveys that show increasing viewership of Fox News, decreasing belief in climate change, increasing listenership of NPR, increasing belief in climate change. Where do you get your information? How do you surround yourself with a dot of information that confirms a particular worldview and how does climate change fit in with that? And with this expansion of social media, we can now put ourselves into bubbles where we'll get a constant diet of reaffirming information. Uh, just look at the whole debate over the San Bernardino shootings. Watch Fox News. This is about terrorism. Watch CNN or any of the other um, um, media outlets. It's about gun control, the way they are totally different, and you get a diet. Our cultural identity can overcome scientific reasoning. It doesn't mean we're stupid, but our emotions kick in really quick. You know, Herbert Simon uh, won a Nobel Prize by saying we're boundedly rational. We have a limited capacity to pro gather and process information. And so we do things quickly through using heuristics and biases. Uh, psychologists describe us as cognitive misers. We have a certain capacity for gathering information and we spend it very, very carefully. I remember the first time I walked into an organic food store and went up to the grocery aisle and looked at, or the cereal aisle, and looked at a wall of cereals I'd never seen before. And it was crippling. It was frustrating because I normally know how to just grab my Cheerios and walk out. And now I had to expend a lot of energy to make a decision that previously was easy. And that is very frustrating. And so that is at play here. And it's important to put at the bottom here that climate change threatens powerful economic and political interests who have confused the debate and uh, added information that has made it very difficult to sort through this. All this leads up to the important conclusion that once our mi minds are made up and our position aligns with our cultural identity, providing additional scientific data can make us more resolute in resisting conclusions that are at variance with our cultural beliefs.